Okay, on today's video, I'm going to talk about doing PPC slash banner advertising for band categories that you normally can't run PPC ads on. Stuff like, you know, selling guns. Uh, selling pot. <laughs> fireworks. Anything that you can imagine. There is, within this video here, the strategies I'm going to give you, a way to do PPC advertising for your brand. So whatever you're selling, this will make you, you can sell whatever it is and you'll be able to make money. Of course, if it's truly illegal, that's barring that, if it's legal for you to sell it, but not legal for you to sell it on traditional platforms like Google, Bing, and Facebook, which you probably already know that if you're watching this video already, that that's not possible. This is going to be your workaround here on this video for you to use and, have to, and walk away from and can use today to start making you some money using PPC ads with the strategy I give you and the workaround I give you here today. So anyway, um, as usual in my videos, I have a short list of things to cover here about the do's and the don'ts for the strategy I'm going to give you to work around not being able to advertise your pot store on Google or whatever you're trying to do that you're having problems with right now. Um, and then of course, how to do it, how to execute things to you know avoid, what kind of results that you can expect, that kind of thing, all included on this video. So anyway, the first thing I'm gonna talk about though is you know what PPC is banned, where and why. So first thing is, what uh, what PPC is banned? So there's a whole list of different categories. It took me a long time to list all of the different categories. I may include that in the description of this video um, when I post this. But essentially, the big ones, the big money niches that I can think of right off the top of my head are stuff related to marijuana and fire fire firearms. Fireworks is pretty big uh, as well, but there are. 10 to 20 other ones, uh, of course, for sure. But this, these strategies, if you're in any of those other categories, by the way, totally fine. Like I said, if it's legal to sell, you can sell it using this method and make money, uh, to what it's not about if you'll make money, but how much. And I'll explain why. So that's, so with that, you, of course, if you don't know if it's banned or not, just a simple Google search. Can I advertise my X on Google ads? On Google, we'll get you an answer. And if you, if it's an answer is no, these other methods are going to work for you. The system is going to work for you that I use. When I'm working with a client who comes to me and says, Corey, I want to advertise. But then I find out I can't go on Google, which is going to be my first go-to. These are other, other, other options. And why is Google my first go-to? Because they have the most market share of the total opportunities to advertise out there. Um, we want to advertise to people who come to our site, i.e. it's called remarketing. And if we're going to do remarketing, we want to be able to get on as many sites as possible, which is always some part of our marketing strategy, our PPC strategy, because it makes the new advertising that draws people in work better and makes the whole thing profitable as, as a whole. It can be profitable without remarketing, but in general, every campaign I run has remarketing. And so if we're going to do remarketing, we want to be on as many sites as possible. Google has, you know, like 90% market share out there of the people that pu publishers, i.e. website owners that have, that want to make money through advertising goes through Google AdSense. Google AdSense is the um, program that allows you to, through Google Ads, advertise on these websites. Um, you know, but of course there are other options, which is why you're going to have workarounds on this video, but and uh, for the most part, I know Google's fraud detection is good. You're not going to, there's a big problem in the uh, display advertising world, banner advertising world of trying to figure out a way to verify if clicks happened or not. And for all practical purposes, I, outside like doing blockchain type technology, I don't know of one. It all comes down to though, that at the end of the day, you figure out, you, is, you, I mean, if you, some companies you can't do what is called direct response advertising where you're expecting a response of some type, whether that's to download something or buy something. Um, 
And so your first move would be to do that if that's your concern. And then from that, track and see if you're making money or not. The cost of the ads if you're getting false clicks is just a part of doing business if you're still making money. If you're not, I can understand why your Oreo uh, trying to sell cookies, there's no direct response that will really work for that. And so if you're getting fake impressions, i.e. impressions are what is what you, is is a time that your ad shows up, not a click itself on the ad. Why you would have a problem with that? And I don't have a good answer for you there other than to say to stick with mainstream ad, uh, websites that, you know, the CNN.com, uh, the Fox News dot com stuff that you know those sites aren't going to likely to be pulling the scams and um, loading their site up with bot traffic or fake traffic or traffic from third world countries like the philippines and so on so but usually if google bans something bing bans it and facebook bans it and it's like sometimes you get lucky facebook won't ban something and google will and vice versa uh, actually, it happens more often than you think. So if, you, if you're bad on Google or know that you can't do it on Google, try these other two as well for yourself. Maybe you can do it. Maybe you can't. But uh, where are these ads going to... Uh, so where is where is PPC banned? Again, individually, these it might be banned on all three. These are your first go-to sites of stuff that's going to get you the highest effort return, both total return and the ROI for the most part in terms of effort put in, and time to get for execution and on, so on and so forth. You always try to make your ads work here. And if you can't get on here, then you go to these other methods. But definitely this, it's, there's another 10, again, it's not just a direct match of what's banned on Google is what's banned on Facebook and, and Bing, whatever. But for the most part, there's pretty good that overlap there. And there's going to be 10, 20, 30 markets that each one of these networks individually won't accept. Um, so, all of them are strict, strict, but they're strict in a little bit different way. That answers the where and then the why. Because The reason why they don't do this is because there's liability issues to deal with for these companies. What if somebody ends up getting an ad that for, for pot, if you're running pot ads, and that person's in a state where it's not legal, and they made a mistake serving up the ad to that person there, when really they're traveling, but Google thought they were in California, but really they're, you know, they're in uh, Iowa. You see where there's problems. They, and they make enough money to where, you know, forget about it. Now there's other people that, of course, has the opportunity because they have their in with that. And that is the bread and butter. And therefore, and it's part of our work around here that you could get into that. But... You know, you would be, you would do the same thing if you were Google, right? Why? Who cares about those little crumbs that are on the side? It's risky, and who cares about that little bit? And they don't. Um, and they got, they also have people that will come to them anyway. So anyway, so if they piss off some people, <laughs> they don't care. Uh, they're big enough where that works. So the second thing I want to talk about here is the workarounds. What do I actually do if I find that I'm banned in all three categories or maybe in just one or two, but I've gotten everything I can get out of that one or two and I'm time to move on. What else can I do out there? So you can actually, of course, do this on top of what you're doing here. Um, if it's just one or two that you can get on. So there's second and third tier ad network. So these would be like your first tier ad network. So second tier ad network, as the way that I define it, would be like an ad roll where there's other sites where you could advertise that has a, 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 a banner ad of advertising available on a pay-per-click basis. And then there's sites like uh, Rev Content. You can Google that. There's a bunch of, of content networks out there that are less known and we'll just say less reputable, have a little bit less quality sites on it and a little bit sketchier traffic. But So those are also an opportunity. Um, to find more like it, you can try sites like Rev Content or sites like AdRoll. And what you do is you just reach out to these sites and you ask them, hey, can I run my pot ads here? For that, I can guarantee you these won't do it. But for other great area categories like, um, you know, fireworks, maybe. Um, I, I haven't checked each one. And perhaps a somebody should make a, a, a matrix or a site that they actually show what's but on each category, what's approved and on what site, that would be useful. If somebody does it, <laughs> should let us all know. 
Um, so with that though, so I would start with, because the traffic is a little better on these second tier sites like AdRoll and uh, Credo and uh, stuff like that, start there. If it doesn't work there, try your third tier. Of course, there's no reason why, again, just like I said above for you to use second and third tier both. I, for, for me, all doesn't matter what I'm marketing, whether it's a sensitive category or not, what works on one platform, I'll see to see, try to see how many other platforms it will work on. And there's a, if you're tracking your results, you'll be able to see there's some level that traffic is worth paying for, whether you start out at a buck per click with the ROIs at four to one and I need an eight to one. So now I'll tell that network I'll be willing to pay 50 cents a click. Now I got the eight to one return I want. And then I got what I want out of that platform. And then I try some other platforms and I do the same thing there. If, uh, but if you can't get on these second and third tier networks or just want to move on, uh, there's a thing called pragmatic advertising. So that's basically other smaller networks out there um, as well. And, and you access this advertising through what is called a DSP or a demand side platform. And there's two different types of platforms out there, fully managed and self-serve. And so what basically, either they will manage all your ad placements for you on these programmatic advertising networks, which would be your fully managed. And if they let you go in there and do it like a Google ads would let you do, i.e. self-serve, you do it yourself. That's why they call it self-serve. Um, and then with that, there's actually like pragmatic advertising networks. You can Google pragmatic advertising network, marijuana, pragmatic advertising network, fireworks. And you'll find perhaps a network that has, that allows advertising in that particular space. And that's how you would find it. And a bigger money niche that has more money into it, bigger market cap size, the more dedicated networks you're going to find for this, or just networks in general that allow you to run ads in those space as it's worth, there's more money in it, and therefore more people that entrepreneurs to get into it and offer that service. Um, to what they're doing is they're linking up with site owners to see if they'll, you know, let them run ads there and negotiate a payment. They're middlemanning it for you, just like Google kind of middlemans the process for you, whereas before the back in the 90s, you had to go directly to a site owner to run advertising and negotiate with them. Uh, they do the same thing, but on a smaller scale. But anyway, within that, uh, pr the programmatic advertising networks, there's networks that offer like actual specialized. So there's actually just, a lot of people don't know this, there's just pot networks out there where you, they, all they do is run pot ads for people who sell, you know, pot related products, whether that's the marijuana or the C CBD, uh, pipes, whatever it is. Uh, don't, don't ask me how I know. <coughs> College days. <coughs> Uh, <laughs> then there's also networks that will let you advertise, but they're just not specialized, of course. So there's two different things there. Now, the difference between these two on the specialized networks, of course, you're going to have better quality sites that you're on. They're actually in business to find quality sites for you to advertise on, but there's more competition. The price per click will be higher because because of them doing more of the footwork to find the quality sites for you and negotiate better on your behalf for that specific purpose and niche you're in. Um, and also on those sites themselves, you know, of course they rotate the banners out. It's not just one person that advertises there at any given time because it's a dynamic ad technology that runs the ads. And so of course, if there's more people that know about this dedicated network that's in your sp marijuana space with you, there's more competition for that ad space and only so many times the ad could be shown. So yeah, your price is going to be higher, but there's also just more people there in general to have that will want the same exact ad spots, uh, especially if they're profitable or if they're profitable in general. Whereas on the non-specialized network, basically all that's happening is, is you're getting on a network that allows you to have pot advertising. What they do is they take your ad and then they, they have a special department to approve your ad. Because even within like marijuana, there'll be CBD might be allowed, but then, um, you know, glass pipes won't be allowed. And so they'll categorize it in a specific way. And then the, they have a, uh, their platform is set up. So the people that want to sell advertising on their sites, the website owners that they 
negotiate, you, you know, the terms of what you wanting to buy advertising on their site, they will, uh, on their, they, they do it through a, their, a platform that they can interact online and then they get to decide if they're going to allow pot advertising on that site or not. And within pot, are you going to allow, you know, it's broken up sometimes, not always. And that if they blacklisted pot, you just ain't getting on their site where somebody else can. And so what happens is though, on most generalized pragmatic advertising networks is a bunch of like, let's say 90 plus percent automatically exclude pot. There'll be a small chunk there that allows, but the general rule of thumb is here's the catch. The people that are more likely to, to, to be willing to work with anybody, even sketchier categories, springier categories. It's not sketchy. I should don't want to put your, your stuff down, but, um, you know, fringe categories pick up the business anybody else doesn't want. Generally, not always, you, it's more likely, statistically likely, we're going to assume because we're in business, we have to do this here, that you're, that the, uh, site's less quality, uh, and they have harder time selling their ad space. If it works, they don't need to have to go after everybody else. And some people honestly don't care, and that'll honestly also earn them the more, most money. It'll also earn more per click because there's only so much inventory available on so many sites. So as a whole, you're going to get less quality traffic because you only have the quote unquote desperate people that are willing to do that because they also have their own liability issues. Just like the reason why Google, Bing and Facebook doesn't do this in the first place. So you have that. If, if that's not going to work for you, or if you already went through and done that, made all the money you can from that already in your market, and there's tons of programmatic advertising networks out there. So you could spend months just figure, you know, testing different ones out. There's dozens, hundreds out there. There might only be one or two or three specialized in your area. Uh, but there's hundreds of ones out there that you're going to be able to contact and run your ads and whatever, get what you can out of that network and then move on to the next one. Beyond all that, or if you can't make that work for whatever reason, the traffic sucks. There's not a dedicated network that will work for you. Uh, therefore, you can't really and also can't get on other generalized ones um, because there's just not enough sites that allow to do what you do. You can make your own network. You go and you find a list. And this is genuinely, by the way, the best in business. You always want to find out what everybody else is doing and then do the opposite thing. In, in advertising, this is especially true because that's where the opportunity is. That's where the cost to get a, a customer or a client is cheaper than the stuff, the proven stuff. And it's not, a lot of times it's not that it doesn't work. It's just people moved on to a different trend. So what people don't do is they don't negotiate their own ad buys from different websites because they have these third party companies all over the place that do it. And these people are pitching companies all the time to buy their advertising from them. Um, you know, on your, on your behalf, Google wants you to advertise. So they're pushing you to advertise and they, you know, and therefore you probably got, have gotten to by one of these pragmatic ad networks or fell into through one of these other ad networks before you've ever had to even think about going to negotiate on your own behalf. It's like having an agent, the agent can get you something, but if you negotiate your own deals, it'll take more time, but potentially you'll get to make a lot more. You're not going to get the leftovers because you're going to be able to go right for you what, what for your what you want. But anyway, what you do is that like if you're in the marijuana space again, you will go out and make a and if you're selling CBD, CBD, find all the sites that t just review CBD, and it doesn't have to be a whole site dedicated to CBD. You'll get lucky to find that even. But we're talking definitely whole sites that are dedicated to it for sure. That's the best of the best. You want all of those. But even if they have a good article that's ranked highly on Google, you'll make that into a list and then you'll contact the webmasters. Finding their email address is sometimes a little difficult, but usually you can just find the contact form and just have a script that you're going to use each time. Hey, I'm looking to buy an ad from you on this page and the, you know, how much does it cost? But if you in general see they're, they're running banner ads on that site already, then you can negotiate a direct buy that you just replace that at and you say, I'm willing to pay more to be shown versus the other guys, if you allow it. Um, otherwise I'd like to advertise on this page. So, and if you help them out and say, I'd like to advertise in this space here, would you allow it? I'm willing to pay X. You get a higher response rate than if you say not, 
you get the highest response rate if you give them a, a, a quote up front and tell them where you want to advertise. You could just do one of those or you could do none of those. You can decide, but because it cuts out more of the work for the client and knows that you're not BSing them because they get emails all the time from different people who want different stuff and link exchange offers and so on and so forth. So if you be specific, it'll help you. Um, but you do that and then you just find every relevant page out there. Of course, if the content's crap, forget about it. You want people that genuinely or helped by the content because that's going to be most likely to have real content on it or a highest the highest proportion of real quality traffic on it as you can. And you know it's good a good page and gets good quality traffic if it ranks on Google on the first page, by the way, just so that you know. If it doesn't, it's questionable. And that's how I would go about finding those. But with that, there's tools and slash plugins. You can tell that owner if they're not familiar on how to do it. Like if you have a WordPress site, I've actually done this. There's a plugin that allows you to have a banner ad there where you can just through the WordPress backend upload your banner ad and then it'll keep track of how many clicks it's got so that and it will like send a report to you and so on and so forth. And you can just negotiate. A lot of times people will just do a, a per month um, or like a per thousand, but you could also do a per click deal using this. It, it, it's common enough. There should be a plugin for WordPress or whatever you're using. Um, to track how many people are clicking on your ad or pay for how many, it's usually per thousand or for every thousand times the ad, the ad shows, uh, shows they'll, they'll charge you so much. Um, to where you can use it, there'll be a plugin out like there you can direct them to and just say, hey, if you use this plug, you're using WordPress, you use this plugin, I'm willing to pay two bucks a click, however many clicks this gets every week or month or, you know, maybe they want to get paid quicker. Maybe that's a benefit to get you a, the best deal possible. Maybe it's not. I will send you a check for all the clicks that I got on that ad. So you kind of get the gist of it, though. There's also other uh, banner, uh, direct buy banner networks uh, offers. Out. So uh, buy sell ads. If you Google that, that's an actual um, site that pairs you up with people who are trying to sell banner ads directly you know, just on their site like that, but it's not per click. It's you're paying for per thousand impressions like that. It's different than the ad networks in that it's, it, get, it has a price per thousand, per thousand times the ad shows, and then it shows the website. So basically you're getting more dedicated showing on a particular website. And so they have a whole different bunch of different pages, but they probably don't have very many available uh, in terms of inventory on these uh, more, um, these other categories that are more restricted, but you may be able to find something there, but it works like that. And so it's not just me telling you to do this. There's a lot of people out there still actually negotiating ad space on websites like that. Maybe not all the way manual because they, they can use a buy sell ads to do it, but it's still a proven method for me. If you got the time and I was selling direct to consumer, it was my business. I would be going and finding all the pages that are getting good action on Google right now and buy as many of them as you can. And just like if you were trying to buy and flip houses, a bunch of the people are going to want you to pay too much. That's fine. Or you can run the ad regardless of what they charge. And then you can see how much it's converting. And then if it's if it costs too much for what it's converting, you can just renegotiate your deal with that person, which gets me into my last point here. Tracking, how to get results. So how to get results from these ads. Once you've gotten your ads placed, what you do is you first, of course, if you don't have it, set up Google Analytics on your site. From there, each ad that you place on um, the self-serve platform or through the through the fully managed uh, pragmatic advertising agency that you're that you're going with, um, or your or the whoever you're working with directly to buy ad space on their site, you'll set up what is called a UTM tag, and you can Google that. I won't get into it on this particular video. But basically, it's just like at the end of your your page, uh, your ad URL, where that ad is supposed to take the user to. It's like question mark UTM underscore source equals name of site. And then that way, in Google Analytics under uh, traffic sources, it shows you all the people, how many people, first of all, clicked on your ad from that particular sp you know space. And then how many people, if you have goals set up, to track leads and sales and all that in Google Analytics, you could then see how many converted into an action that you want 
from each banner ad that you have that's out there. Of course, um, if you're running through a network, it would just be like, question. the source would be just ad roll because they don't let you tag it more defined than that. But the other benefit of doing direct ad buys is you can literally have a code that's like um, source equals site XYZ and then page, you know, 12. So you could like literally, f and then add block six. So you could literally see, okay, here's how many clicks I got from this site on this page that I bought a deal from and it converted to this many leads. And if you wanted to track how many leads turned into uh, sales, there's a way to do that. I won't get into it on this video. It's called offline conversion tracking. And then you figure out what it converts at. And then it, like I said, you go back to the site and you, really, really, you could say the math doesn't work at two bucks a click, but a buck a click, we're good. Get I can get the return I need. We're very willing to still take it. If not, I'm going somewhere else, sorry. And then you just find other ones that are gonna pay off at the you know, ROI level that you're looking for. And then you got the best of what you can from what's available out there to you. So anyway, that's why I said at the beginning of the video, it's not if it's gonna work, but how much. It's just a matter of valuing how much the traffic is worth in each place and getting as granular as you can, setting your bids appropriately, and then you have a cash machine that just runs all the time for you. The last thing I'll mention here about other than the UTM tags is multi-channel conversion report. So on Google Analytics down the ver on the left-hand column where your where your navigation is, down towards the bottom near goals, it's a multi-channel uh, conversion report that shows you what the benefit of doing contra uh, conversion tracking and like Google and Bing is, is they do cookie-based tracking. So in other words, if somebody clicks on the ad and then they get to your site and then they come back 30 days later, it tells you how many conversions, that, that's still counted as a quote unquote conversion of that ad. So you can see what the true ROI, is, R, ROI of that campaign is given very few people buy or respond right away or you know not 100%. And it's less for the higher the cost of your product or service is by the way. And so they, because you're gonna be advertising with these advertisers directly, a lot of times, and you're just using Google Analytics, you can get that same kind of, we can total up, you know, all the people who responded and the people that came back and responded as well for, you know, up to 90 days or 30 days to these multi-channel conversion uh, reports. And that it, what it does, is it'll then, there's a way to filter it down. So we can tell, just like I said, did they click on that ad from this location? Did they come back within 90 days and buy or not? So. I highly recommend doing that. Of course, you could figure out what's the average amount of people who respond right away. And then once you have that, you can just have that goal be your goal to test out new traffic sources. That way, in a week, you know, to cut and run or to keep going with it. But in general, you want to check that anyway as well. So you can kind of see, um, have another idea of just what these leads are getting our work from each one of these sources. And then of course, though, on top of all that, make sure you have a way eventually to track the leads all the way to a sale and see how much revenue you're making from it uh, that do come in and track your overall sales and see that and make it a ratio of overall sales to ad spend and see if you raise the ad spend and do a few more of these things if your revenue goes up. That's the, what you're gonna do most of the time to see if it works. These other ways to track, which is like cost per lead and whether track to see um, you know, how many leads turn into a sale are less than perfect to see true ROI on a campaign because a lot of the data, some of the data gets lost because people sometimes will get to your page and bookmark it and come back six months later and buy. That ever gets countered into whether or not that ad is profitable or not. So you also have to look at overall levels of things or, I, you know, I would do that on my business and I do that on a lot of campaigns. Again, the more expensive the product or service, the less the more data you're going to lose and the more you're going to want to use overall revenue trending upwards as a tool to see if what, any of this stuff you're doing for yourself works. And if it works, you know, you can verify it works by upping what you're doing a little bit more and then you should be able to directly see your revenue going up and you have a mechanism to walk up and scale your business there already for yourself in place and know you have 